Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. As I mentioned last week, this is a special edition. It's my first show when I'm in my 50s. And uh, my wife's taken me away for to celebrate this um, uh, momentous event. So I haven't got a show prepared for this week. So what I'm doing, I'm replaying a show I did from July last year. There's plenty covered, so plenty of stuff to keep you interested. Why you should visit Berlin. If you're not going away this year, why you should consider a Park Dean staycation. I've mentioned numerous of times about the time I volunteered at an animal sanctuary, but uh, if you're not into that sort of thing, or maybe if you are, there's plenty of other things you can do by uh, volunteering. So we hear from the great projects. And finally, uh, what to see and do in Mauritius. You never know, I might be telling you all about my 50th birthday trip uh, next week. Depends how well it goes. But anyway, enjoy the show. Oh, and I forgot, we're also covering Mauritius, but to be fair... I did get out of bed at 3 o'clock this morning and I'm feeling a little bit worse for wear. So there's an extra country for you to find out about on this week's show. Now, sometimes travellers, and I include myself in this, they have they treat people's lives as like Disneyland. For an example, lots of people, myself included, say you should get the Cuba before the Americans get there because it's a, it is a chance to be somewhere that doesn't have any influence. There's no McDonald's, there's no Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's just somewhere different and you could be only be in cuba if the americans go there the big business comes in coca-cola goes up and all that it just it takes some of the magic away but that's imposing what you want to see and do when you go away and perhaps making the residents suffer a little bit it's the same with berlin now berlin i always wanted to visit when it was a divided city but i never got round to it I did go to West Germany and along the border of East when I was a kid and there's a river and you could see the East Germans across looking through their binoculars at us. And my dad, when I was a kid at the time, took the wrong turn and was going over this bridge. We were technically in no man's land and had to turn around and go back. And he got a little bit of a feeling about what it's like living near the border of East Germany, but we never made it to Berlin. But again, that was thinking, well, I don't really want Berlin to be unified again because of my selfishness i want to see what it's like when it was under the east west divide and it's the same with the far east as well like we mentioned a few weeks ago marimar or burma where more and more drawers are coming so it's taken some of the magic away from it because it's now becoming more developed to cater for it but at the same time it's helping the locals there so that was in mind when i did this interview about uh, berlin a uh, christian from the berlin tourist office it talks us through various bits and pieces about Berlin. And at the back of my mind, I was always thinking, I wish I'd gone there when you're still divided, but I'd have to get rid of that. I should stop being a selfish traveller. But the interview was recorded over Skype. Uh, my computer had broken, so it was recorded over Skype using my mobile phone. So the sound does get a little bit ropey every now and again, but do bear with it. Berlin sounds a fascinating place to visit, and I will be get there one day. It just won't be divided, but at least I can still say I've been to... Uh, Berlin, which is one of the most famous capitals in the uh, well, cities in the world. So let's get on with uh, what Christian has to say about his city. How far away is Berlin from London? Uh, around 1,000 kilometers means uh, around 600 miles. Okay. If we were to fly over to Berlin from the UK, which of your airports is the closest to the city centre? Yeah. Um, uh, the most close airport to the city center is uh, Tegel, uh, and it's only uh, 15 minutes by taxi from the city center. And the flight time from Berlin to or from London to Berlin is around one and a half, one hour 45. As you're only in Europe, how long would it take if we were to go there by train? Oh, if you go to, by train, you have to go from the main train station. Uh, from St. Pancras to the main train station in Berlin, and that will take you around uh, 10 hours uh, via Brussels and uh, with the Eurostar. I think I'll stick to flying then. That's definitely quicker. Yes, it's definitely quicker. <laughs> quicker, yeah. Berlin's a very historical city. What is the brief history of it? I think the most important thing about uh, Berlin's history is um, the division of the city and, of course, uh, the reunification of the city. Because uh, this year we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. 
and uh, this is the main topic this year. Is there any other still, any of the wall still left? Yes, of course. Uh, we have several parts of the wall. We have, uh, for example, the north part, which is really the original setting, because the the, the wall is not only one wall. It's it's a system of uh, of defense or protection. How the East German uh, said it's two walls, and there's a death strip in the middle. Uh, so there's there's a, a rest uh, part of it you, you can see, which is really very very interesting. But we also have uh, the longest part in the south, in the southeast of the city, um, which is called East Set Gallery, which is uh, uh, the world's biggest uh, street painting. So you have a colored wall, uh, um, which uh, more than 100 um, artists painted after the wall came down. What does the painting show? Uh, different, uh, very, very different uh, um, ideas, imaginations, dreams uh, about the wall, but also about uh, living without any frontiers, about freedom, uh, the whole range, I would say, the whole range uh, around a peaceful revolution. Okay. Moving on to the, the area covered by Berlin, how many districts make up the city? We have 12 districts, and they're divided in sub-districts. So if you talk to Berlin people, they will say, for example, oh, you go to Kreuzberg, which is a part of Friedrichshain Kreuzberg, or you go to, to Prenzlauer Berg, which is a part of Prenzlauer Berg, and... Um, and, and wedding, so it's, it's it's mixed. Is there any part of the city which is rarely visited by tourists? Rarely visited, yeah, or highly visited. Uh, rarely to start with. Is there a bit that's not as popular as the rest? Yeah, I would say. I mean, uh, uh, for example, Spandau or Köpenick are, are districts uh, which are really nice and they have some historic um, centres. But they're not so much visited, yes. Okay. So which one is the most popular and why? Pardon? Which district is the most popular then and uh, why is it the most popular? Um, I would say um, if you see it in a touristic, uh, under a touristic aspect, uh, the most popular uh, district is Mitte because, uh, for example, the Brandenburg Gate, our main landmark, is uh, located in Mitte. Of young people, a lot of yeah, a lot of young people like to go to to Kreuzberg or Friesland because it's that's a party miles. We've done the most popular and the least popular districts, but taking all the districts together, what do they offer a, a visitor from the UK? Mm. Um, I would say the historical the, the historical part of the city is um, mainly in, in the district Mitte, but if you want to go, for example, for for cafes, restaurant, and uh, nice shopping. You can go to Prenzlauer Berg, for example, or you go to Friedrichshain. If you really um, uh, like uh, historical sites like castles and so on, you go to Charlottenburg, and they have also very nice museums, and of course the Palais of Charlottenburg. And um, if you want to to shop uh, until you drop, you go to Kurfürstendamm or Friedrichstraße. You're listening to the Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. I'm speaking to Christian from the Berlin Tourist Office via Skype. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the sound does get a little bit ropey every now and again. Um, I apologise for that, but it was Skype over a mobile phone. So I think technology was great, even if the, uh, the result isn't perfect. But now we're going to find out how easy it is to get around uh, Berlin. How easy is it to get around to see all these? Very easy, because we have a very good um, public uh, transport system. We have uh, a metro, we have uh, trams, we have regional trams, and you can uh, all use them with one ticket, which is very easy uh, to access. Uh, how expensive are your cabs if somebody doesn't want to take the train? Yeah, If you don't take the train and you don't uh, buy this uh, Berlin Welcome Card, for example, which offers you the whole range of public transportation, and uh, special discounts for museums, restaurants, and so on. If you go by by uh, taxi, for example, to go from the airport, Tempelhof, to the city centre, to uh, Brandenburg Gate, I mentioned before, it's around 15 uh, British pounds. Okay. 
What about accessibility? Is it easy to get around if you're less able to do all the walking? If you're a wheelchair yeah. user? Yeah. It's very easy. Uh, uh, all the museums, all the uh, public museums, the public, public um, institutions, also the, most of the restaurants, and also the public transportation is uh, ready for, for um, easy access. That's good to hear. London's not quite switched on at that at the moment. Yeah. yeah. What annual events are held in Berlin? Oh, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest, ev biggest event is the New Year's Eve party, with more than one million uh, visitors every year in front of the Brandenburg Gate. But we also have, you know, Food Week, Art Week, Fashion Week, Music Week. <laughs> <laughs> we have every day. We have every day one thousand five hundred events in the city. That's an awful lot, isn't it? <laughs> For, for fair bit. Some sometimes you sometimes you just have to decide what you do, yeah. and sometimes it's not easy to decide because it's so much. <laughs> you mentioned about meal week. Uh, what is a traditional Berlin meal? The traditional Berlin meal, the most well-known one, is a curry sausage, but uh, which also eat a lot of fish, like pike perch. It's a fish from the region. We eat liver with onions, um, roasted onions, and smashed potatoes. And we have uh, a lot of new cuisine, like uh, Berlin is the world capital of vegan restaurants. We have more than we have 26 vegan restaurants here. So this is right now very, very trendy. Yeah, I'm a vegan, so that's good. I was, I was in Germany 25 years ago, and I did struggle to find something without meat in. So it's all changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it changed a lot. Uh, I think the gastronomy is a very good symbol for the change of the city. If you're somebody like me who can't speak German, is it easy for easy to get around to make yourself understood? Yeah, most of the, especially the young people speak English. And Berlin is a very international city. We have 187 nations living here. So uh, to, I think it's it's harder to find a... <laughs> a Berlin, real Berliner, than uh, uh, somebody f from anywhere in the world. <laughs> so no problem with conversation in English. That's good to hear. Being British, I'm very bad with uh, that is, second languages. That is also, yeah, that is also a development of the last 25 years. Berlin became really a very cosmopolitan city. And this is a big change to the situation before uh, the fall of the war. You've already said you've got a lot on in the city. What's the minimum amount of time you should spend there to uh, get the best of